He gave me a robe of pure white, feasting on manna from heaven, and that's why I'm happy tonight. Wonderful. Well, a few announcements, and then I want to have a uh, just a time for prayer. This is a little bit loud up here. If you can turn it down just maybe a little bit. A um, couple of announcements uh, that I have. Um, March 7th, so that'll be a um, week after next, Sunday after next. Uh, I want to have, I want to preach on Vision, Vision Sunday. Uh, I want to preach... Uh, on uh, just some goals and uh, some things that I've been praying about for the rest of 2021, and um, and so on uh, March 7th, uh, I just want to announce that that, that, that I'm going to be uh, just praying and, uh, and 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 working on that, and just to have some different things that uh, we're hoping to accomplish this year, and just moving forward and uh, and for the cause of Christ, uh, and then. April the 3rd is a, the Saturday before Easter. The Saturday before Easter. And um, I've been praying about uh, having an outreach day on property. And uh, it's called The Hunt, which will just be a very, very basic and very simple uh, field full of candy and a few eggs and an outreach to the community to bring your kids and have a little ribbon up and uh, have families be able to come enjoy the, the children being able to go and fill a bag full of candy really and uh, the goal is to get to get the community on property and of course to be a blessing to the to the families and the children of the area and uh, and so I'm, I'm going to ask that everyone would uh, just really be in prayer for that day. Um, it's about five weeks away. It's coming really fast. And uh, I want to get some plans uh, made. But we're not going to make it overcomplicated. And uh, we've been involved in several of these, my wife and I, and some others that we know in the past. And, and they're a lot of fun. Uh, they don't last too long. And uh, it's always been a blessing. We've always had a very positive response. Uh, from the community, and just to to get come on property, have a, a wonderful couple hours. We'll we'll work out some details on COVID. We'll be sure that we have some masks available, and and, and we'll work out those details. But if y'all could be in prayer for for those two days, uh, March seventh, and then April the third, and uh, and that'd be a great day also on April the third to be able to invite people to come to a Sunday service on Easter uh, on the fourth. And so, a couple days uh, that we're um, that we're praying about, um, and then I would also like to take a moment, just right now, even um, really just to open up if anybody has a prayer request that uh, we'd like to pray for um, on this Wednesday night. I want to be sure that we're praying for. I have I already have Brittany down on on my list here. We're praying for her. Uh, does anybody else have anything that they, they, they want to be praying about? Another, yes. Yes. That can be a problem when you don't know and mm-hmm. yeah 
it'll be a lifestyle change, but m m many people, many people do that, Brandon. Jay, definitely, and uh, anyone else? Um, one other announcement, that, or just something I want to pray about, and uh, we we haven't worked out all the details on this. And of course, um, I'm going to talk a lot about this also on uh, on, on March the seventh. But uh, praying for children's ministries, um, praying for uh, I want to pray about a bus route getting the bus route started and of course praying for laborers you know laborers I mean we we have I think a lot of prayer warriors and uh, but I'm also praying for laborers that can be out you know on the streets hitting the roads and knocking doors and uh, but those are also some things that um, uh, that are you know in the works hopefully and uh, you know just uh, beginning to get out into the community and minister in the children's ministries um, I think it'll benefit us as a church that if a family visits who has children to have children here and so if we go get them and bring them here and then there'll be children here for people to go hey look there's children you know and so sometimes we'll just make it happen right <laughs> and uh, but let's be praying for that also uh Children Ministries in the bus route. And um, all this, I don't know, those kind of things. God's going to have to work out the details, but it all starts with praying about it. Uh, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, if there's no other prayers, my daughter just walked in. I wanted to make sure I recognize her. All right. And embarrass her, sir. Let's go to Lord in prayer. Oh, pardon me. Is she doing better? We'll pray for Lake and Spinch Nerve. All right. All right, let's go to Lord in prayer and we'll, uh, we'll get going to service. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord, we certainly love you God and we thank you Lord just for being so good to us and uh, Father just as we're able to meet here together as a group Father just uh, praying uh, together Lord in one accord Lord just turning to you Father knowing that uh, you are just so magnificent and so wonderful Lord and we just praise you and lift you up tonight Father Father I uh as we have several prayer requests here, Lord, uh, Father, and I know that you know everyone. Father, I know that you know uh, those who may have an unspoken Father that they didn't want to shout out into the, the public, Lord. Uh, I pray, God, that you would that you would see to those, Father. But we have several daisies uh, praying for a friend, Mick, who just uh, had his leg amputated, Lord. Because of diabetes, Father, and Lord, I pray God that you would uh, touch him and he let that heal quickly. Father, I know his, his, there's going to be a lifestyle change there, and just uh, that you would be with him, Lord. And we're also praying for Brittany, Lord, as she's been dealing with the cancer, Father. Father, I pray God you'd touch her body. Pray, Lord, you'd heal it. Pray God that you would be with her family and and all who's involved with that, Lord. And the doctors, Lord, give them wisdom. And Father, I pray you just help her, Lord. And as Terry's lifted up Daryl, Lord, who's just a younger man who's who's just found out that he's diabetic, Lord, and was rushed to the hospital. And Father, he's going to go through uh, some lifestyle changes, Father. Help him, God. And Lord, to help him have the right med medications that will allow him to Continue just to, to live a good, productive life, Lord. But, Lord, be with him during this time. Brandon's lifting up his, his uh, co-worker, Jay. 
Father who has throat cancer and has came back, Lord. Father, again, I pray you'd be with the doctors, give them wisdom, uh, Lord, with a treatment. But God, you are the great physician with all these that we've lifted up here, Father, and we, we trust you. I pray you'd, again, touch his body and just heal him, Father. Father, as I look, we look towards the future of the ministries at Springwater Baptist Church, Lord, God, I'm praying about children's ministries here. Lord, I'm praying about a bus route. Father, I pray, God, that you would work out every detail. Father, I'm praying about uh, April 3rd, the hunt. Lord, I pray, God, that you would bless that day. I pray, Lord, that you would work out every detail from now till then with workers and, and uh, the finances and all that it will take, Father. Uh, Lord, I'm also lifting up uh, my daughter's uh, pinched uh, nerve in her neck, Father. I pray, God, you would heal that, Lord, and give her relief. But Father, as we're able to uh, continue in our service, Lord, I pray, God, you'd meet with us. I pray, Lord, that uh, in all that goes on here tonight would be pleasing to you, that honor and glory would be given to you, Father. And, Lord, that uh, in all that we do, Lord, that you would meet with us, that you would speak to our hearts. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Brother Joe, we have two more songs. Please take your hymnal, red hymnal again, and turn to 439. Count your blessings. 439. And up on life's pillows you are tempest-tossed When you are discouraged thinking all is lost Count your many blessings, name them one by one And with spooky surprise you what the Lord hath done Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem weary? You are called to bear. Count your any blessings, you are And we we'll are singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, leave them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God. Go to verse four, please. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged. God is over all. Count your many blessings. Angels will attend. Help and comfort give you in your journeys in. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Now please turn to 355. What a friend we have in Jesus. All three verses. <laughs> what a friend we have in Jesus. All our griefs and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Oh, what 
peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find our friends so faithful? sorrow share. Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, comfort with a load of care? Still a refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee, take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Find a soulless there. Okay. Everything we do should be bathed <coughs> in prayer. And uh, I, uh, was planning on preaching on prayer tonight and we am, I'm going to but the Lord changed my direction just a little bit and that's okay um, we're gonna, if you will uh, if, if you'll stand if you will and we'll turn to 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5 verse 16 and if we could stand while we read the word of God 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 and we're going to read down through verse 25 the Bible says <clears throat> rejoice evermore pray without ceasing in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you quench not the spirit despise not prophesying prove all things hold fast that which is good abstain from the appearance of evil and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly and I pray uh, I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ faithful is he that that calleth you who also will do it verse 25 brethren pray for us let's have a word of prayer and we'll be seated Heavenly Father Lord Lord as uh, we're able to open your word tonight Father I pray God that again that you would uh, meet with us tonight Father I pray God you'd speak to heart Lord I pray you'd help me tonight Lord, I pray you just empower me for this next few minutes as we uh, look at these verses. And, uh, Father, we just trust you in all things, and I thank you for, in advance for all you're going to do. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Of course, in the recent weeks, you know, I'm giving uh, much thought, much prayer into the coming weeks and months and just the future of Springwater Baptist Church and 
praying just for God to bless, praying for God to open doors just to uh, open the hearts of the community and to provide laborers, to provide all that we need uh, to be able to reach the, commu the community in a way that we maybe have not in the, in the past, especially 2020. Uh, to re-engage, if you will, to just, I don't know, I, I might say just lack of better words, to get out there and, and bring them in, you know, and, and just reach a community. And as I, I think on this often, and, and just, again, praying for God's blessing, and I, I think a lot on just us as, as a church here tonight, those who are here tonight and on Sundays and I think on just different habits and I didn't quite know how to title this particular lesson but good habits for a Christian or something like that you know it's, it, it, and we have a list of these great habits and the of, of what God would want us to do, to be, in just our everyday life, individually and, and as a church. I, I want to go through verse 16 through verse 25. I'm going to spend a little bit more time on verse 17. But um, I just want to run through these. The Bible says to rejoice evermore what a great habit what a great choice to make I believe you know our Christian life is full of choices and we can choose to rejoice we can choose not to the Bible says rejoice evermore to be full of cheer a calm happiness if you will a confident happiness that God's in charge you know that all that's going on in our lives and others and around us that you know we can rejoice not in circumstances but in God himself but in the Lord Jesus Christ we can rejoice in heaven I my co-worker in fact yesterday I was, uh, he looks at me he goes you know, you're right. You seem a little preoccupied. And I was a little preoccupied. I was kind of thinking of tonight and just uh, yesterday. I just actually quite a bit preoccupied at work, and he could kind of tell. He's like, "You, you seem a little preoccupied. You okay?" I'm like, "Well, yeah, I'm good. I'm going to heaven. You know, we can rejoice in that. We can rejoice in in today because Jesus is good and God is good, and and yeah, there's. We, we, we just prayed for a list of, of, of heartache. You know, of things that that we'd rather not see happening in people's lives. But if, but if we have Christ, if we've accepted Christ, and, and, I, and I hope to say if they, those that we're praying for, if they've accepted Christ, even in these circumstances, we don't rejoice in the circumstances, but we, we rejoice in God. Rejoice in how good Jesus is. And, and and look to to what are you teaching me, Lord? What why why are we going through these circumstances? I I don't try to figure out the why. I try to figure out, well, Lord, what do you want me to learn? What's the lesson here? And just rejoice in Him during that process of time. Rejoice, and, and He goes on to say, forever, evermore. Rejoice evermore, and it literally means all the time. It's kind of hard sometimes, you know. God says, hey, listen, rejoice. Always. Rejoice all the time. And all that's going on, we must rejoice in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, of course, we go right into, into pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. I hope 
hope that you'll forgive me in, in some senses where, you know, I by no means think I'm with a group here tonight that may, you know, probably prays more than I do. I, I feel like I pray a lot. I feel like I'm always praying. I don't know if you ever feel that way. Where it's just like you're just always talking to the Lord. Um, and and I'm, I'm excited for that. When I know that, when I'm struggling, I find out I'm not talking to God. You know, you ever been down that road where it's like, why am I struggling so much? And finally it's just like, hmm, I haven't been talking to the Lord. I haven't been praying. I've been trying to figure all this out myself, you know. I, and, and I find myself getting frustrated or maybe making uh, poor choices uh, on the job site, maybe with words, maybe how I treated somebody, you know. And, and for me, I find out, hmm, I haven't been in a good communication with God. You know, the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. And to literally pray in an uninterrupted fashion. And of course, it's not telling us to, uh, if you will, get into your prayer closet or maybe wherever you all spend your private time with the Lord and just stay in that space, you know. And, but, and we all should have that space. And I'm sure we all do. You know, um, my time with the Lord is very early in the morning. You know, I try to be up by 5 or a little before 5, you know, and spend that, for me, that first hour or so just by myself, you know, quiet with the Lord. Just talking with Him and being in His Word and praying. But but I, t- I try to, t- I, I hate to use even the word I during in this particular subject. One would try to take that with them throughout the day. Let me say that. One would try to take them with that. You know, I try, you know, uh, and drive to work, you know. And, and for me, uh, work's always been that that drive to work. And I, I'm going to dare say, uh, Brother Bob, that you, we were talking about drives to work just a little bit ago. That drive to work is that time where, you, you know, you can just, it's you and the Lord, you know. And I, I, I've often taken that time. Uh, I've always liked having that 20, 30-minute time drive to work because, it's kind of my time with the Lord also. And wherever, whatever you have, you know, find that time where where you're by yourself with the Lord, whether it's driving early in the morning, maybe late at night, I, I don't know. And, uh, <laughs> sorry, man. Um, I don't know when it is for you, but that's kind of where it's at for me. And, uh, you know, early in the morning and, uh, you know, on the drive to work. <clears throat> you know, I'll find that time, though, throughout the day. I always like to I always like to be able to come home and knowing that throughout the day I'm kind of checking in. It's like the kid calling home, you know, just checking in. Lord, I'm right. I'm doing okay. Lord, I... I I'm going to have a, a heart, you know, a, a strenuous conversation with, with this particular guy. Lord, I'm going to need your help. You know, I think that's what it's just saying is that pray without ceasing. Just keeping that, Daddy, I'm checking in. You know, Papa God, hey, I'm just checking in. I'm doing okay, you know. I think I'm doing okay. If I'm not, let me know, you know. What do you think? You know, you ever had your kids, you know, even as adults? Isn't it a joy when they call and say, Hey, what you, what do you think about this decision? We've been very blessed, and our son's actually gotten, I think, this, gotten to a maturity in his life where he actually calls and asks for advice. <laughs> you know? I, but I think that God wants us to do that, you know. Pray without ceasing. Lord, I got a, I got a decision I, I, I need to make. Hey, what you, what do you think? God, what, what does your word say? And just keeping that that continual that continual communication, checking in. Lord, I'm checking in again. Just just checking checking on you know, making sure I'm doing okay. You know, and bringing it home in the evenings. Of course, you know meals and 
and those sort of things. Praying with your children, praying with your spouse. I I know, probably not as much as we should, but occasionally, you know, my wife and I like to pray together. I think it's important. I think we should pray together more than we do, but, you know, we, we try to be sure that we're praying together. I don't know if you pray with each other, but it's important. Pray with your spouse. Pray with your children. My children are adults. Pray with them. My children are out of state. Checking in. Give them a call. I, you know, give them a call. Hey, how's it going? Hey, let's have a word of prayer right over the phone. Let's just let's just pray together. Is your head bowed? Yeah, mine is too. Let's pray. Let's talk to God together. Because in God's economy, we're real close. And we can hear each other. You know, and, and I've learned to have to, I've learned to do that. And, and, and you know, and I'll I'll call my son. He lives in East Texas right now. But, you know, I was like, you know what, son, let's let's pray. I know that we've had them on the phone in the past where we're about ready to eat dinner. It's like, hey, we're going to eat dinner. Is your head bowed? We're, we're getting ready to pray. Yeah, I'm, all right. I'm, you know, pray with your kids. They're adults. Pray with your grandkids. Maybe great-grandkids too. But, you know, they need to learn to pray. They need to know that grandma, grandfather, parents, that, hey, their grandma and grandma, grandpa care about praying mom and dad care about praying I should pray I should care about that they need to see that they need to see that example um, and, and and again I, I'm, I'm in here tonight and I, I, I kind of give a disclosure I don't know that anyone needs this but it's just something God's put in my heart and I want to share that tonight um, I know it's something I, we had to learn you know and we still learn. We learn every day. Hey, you know, I think we need to pray with with our kids. I think we let's let's just have a word of prayer together, you know. And and we have to make that we have to purposefully do that. We have a lot of things coming up. I mentioned earlier I wanna we wanna do a hunt. I, I'm asking that you, you might consider praying for that. Any ministry that's going to move forward, it has to move forward bathed in prayer. If we can put in, I can put in a lot of work. I can get score, knock scores and scores of doors. I can put out a whole bunch of flyers and invites. I can do, I, I, could, I can work myself to death beating the, the streets and, and, and flying this whole area and there's a lot of area here a lot of houses but if it's not bathed in prayer it's all for pain if it's not and, and I mean everyone please 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 let's pray for the future and, and again I'm not I'm not saying you're not but please it's on my heart we need to pray together for for the coming months and the coming seasons of Springwater Baptist Church that God will bless the work that's going to happen that God will be involved in, in, in what's in what's going to happen and that and that he'll bring people in that will touch and change lives and people will get saved and heaven will be filled and, and people's lives will be changed and families will be changed but it all starts with prayer. It all starts with, with, with re- rejoicing and then praying, and just trusting the Lord and all that He's going to do. And and I want to encourage us that we pray without ceasing, in in whatever capacity that we're able to do that. God always answers prayer. And of course, we you know we know there's a there's a no and there's a not yet and sometimes there's a yes. No, God's given me so many yeses. He's answered prayers I didn't even know I needed, and He's not answered prayers that I'm glad He didn't answer. You ever prayed that prayer and then you thought, I'm so glad He didn't answer that. 
<laughs> but we want to bathe the ministry here in, in what we're going to do in the future in prayer today that God will bless and open those doors for tomorrow. It all starts with prayer. Um, verse 18. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It's God's will that we give thanks in everything. And all that's going on in all of our lives. God's good. Give thanks. He says, this is the will of God for Christ Jesus concerning you. To be to be grateful. To experience to, to express gratitude um, Ephesians 5 and 20 give thanks always for all things unto God and the Father and the name of our Lord Jesus Christ can I say let somebody know you're thankful people need to people need to see a thankful person it's it's so important as a Christian, not only to be an example to each other, to encourage one another, but also to encourage those that are outside the doors. To, I think someone who's thankful, it just shows in their actions. It shows in their countenance. It shows in their conversation. Uh, it, and, and it's contagious. It's contagious. To see somebody who you can tell just has that thankful heart, a thankful spirit, and and we don't have to, you don't have to go in and say, just letting you know I'm thankful, you know, praise the Lord. But it starts in here, and it comes out here. I I have a saying. I have this little saying, and I don't know if it it might even be mine. I'm not sure. But we t we take in the Word of God into our mind. And, but until we pull it into our heart, it'll never come out of our hands. See, we read the Word of God, but we need but we need to pull it down into our heart. And when we and when we bring it down to here, it comes out here. See, so many people they put the Word of God here, and they put thankfulness here, but they never pull it down to here. And, and when you bring these truths from here down to here what do i mean by that i mean i'm i'm applying them to my life i'm i i'm i'm can i say i'm believing them i'm living them and i'm taking the truth that i've learned and i'm pulling it down to here and i promise you people around you see it coming out here your actions and your motives and your and everything you do become thankful they become prayerful they they become all that God wants us to be because we took His Word from here and we pulled it down to here. And then it comes out in our hands. It comes out in our actions. It comes out in all that we do. And it changes people's lives. And I don't mean my life. I mean people who know me. People who know you. But until we can take it all the way through, if you will, then it's just up here. We, we know the Word of God and we, we know that the, the Bible says to give thanks in all that we do and, and and we know that the Bible says to rejoice evermore we know the Bible says to uh, pray without ceasing we know it says these things and I got it right here and I maybe even have the verse memorized but until I apply, apply it and I apply it to my life and I bring it from here to here and you, people will never see it here and here right and, and, and that's the idea That's that's what the Lord wants us to do is to be able to to let our light so shine into a dark place. That 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 we're salt and light to a dark world. And that people who uh, don't know a Christian uh, see, see Christianity pouring out of them. And they see it through rejoicing. They see it by somebody who's prayerful. And they see it uh, by somebody who's, who's giving thanks in all that they do in all their circumstances I'm not being saying thank, 
Thank you, Lord, for whatever, uh, maybe a harsh circumstance, but thank you, Lord, for being so good to me. Thank you, Lord, for, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for, for, for just, for all that you do, for all that you do that I never even see. It's, it's so often that we, we count our blessings, name them one by one, and it's a great hymn, and I love that hymn. But oftentimes we're so blessed in things that we've never, we're never able to count. We're never able to see. And God's just so good to us in ways that we have no idea. And uh, so give thanks. This is the will of God. Uh, for Christ Jesus concerning you. Let somebody know you're thankful. Uh, the next verse, it says... Quench not the Spirit. Quench not the Spirit. I really think that these verses honestly build just one on another. But quench not the Spirit. Ephesians 4 and 30. Grieve not the, the uh, grieve, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Verse uh, Ephesians uh, 5 and 18. The Bible says, And be not uh, drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit, uh, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart unto the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father and the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. I think an unthankful spirit grieves the Holy Spirit of God. I think somebody who will not rejoice in the Lord grieves the Holy Spirit of God. I think people who will, who lack a prayer life grieves the Holy Spirit of God. He says, quench, quench not the Spirit. We, we want to be very sensitive. Very sensitive what the Holy Spirit is telling us. We want to be very sensitive to what what God's speaking to us in our in our Bible reading, in our devotions. We want to be very sensitive to someone that, that God puts on our heart to to give an invite to. I remember just last week in, in you know in, I'm sure I do this more than I even realize. Where this man on the side of the road walking by, and I know the Holy Spirit is saying, Give that guy an invite. Give that guy an invite. And, and I'm just saying, I just kept walking. I'm like, Lord, I don't have time right now. And I like giving people invites. You know, I, I like I, I like our new invites, I like leading people to the Lord. But what I'm saying is, on that particular moment, I wasn't being very sensitive to what God wanted me to do. And, and we all find ourselves in that place. But we want to we want to be able to listen. We want to be able to. We need to tune out sometimes some of the noise of the world. Again, back in <clears throat> speaking of our, our prayer clauses or our time with the Lord, <clears throat> we need that time. In, in, where we just turn things off. Turn the Facebook off for an hour. You know, turn the TV off, radio, and, and just have that quiet time. I don't know, maybe some people, I, I need music, I need something to keep me... I, I mean, you all got your, your thing, but... You know, the Holy Spirit speaks in that still, small voice. Sometimes you gotta really listen. Sometimes you really gotta tune in, and sometimes to tune in, you gotta tune out what's going on around us. And sometimes that's really hard to do because there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in our private lives. There's a lot going on in our, you know, in our personal lives and in family and different people that you know we have to minister to and things. But sometimes you just gotta say, you know what? It's time for me just to tune out for half an hour, an hour, and just. Turn it off. Don't bother.
bother me right now. I, you know, I'm, I'm putting the phone down. Sometimes that's pretty hard. I got it right here. Right? Put the phone down. Maybe turn it off. Just shut it off. Say, you know what? I want to hear the Spirit of God. I want to listen to Him. I want to know what He's saying. I want to hear something He's never told me yet. I want to. I want to learn something new. You know. We don't. We we want to be careful, not to quench, the Spirit of God because I think it's easy to do. I th I think if if we neglect some of these prior things we've talked about we just don't quite hear as easy he who hath ears to hear let him hear the bible says he who hath an ear to hear and the bible gives us these warnings saying listen don't don't wash out the 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 the, the, the spirit don't wash it out with the things of this world don't don't quench it and drown it out where you can't hear god because we're at a time where we need to hear the Lord. We need to know what God wants. Uh, it's, in my opinion, it's a, it's a, in my opinion, it's a critical time for the church and for Christians in, in just our society today. This is a time, and I, I think in our lifetime, we've never seen a time like this in Christianity. We need to hear the Spirit of God more than ever this year and in this day and age. Why? For can I say first for our own sake <laughs> for our own sake and for the sake of our loved ones and then for the sake of our community because our community needs strong Christians who are hearing the word of God who are hearing the spirit of God in, in, in the word uh, we'll go on to say uh, the spies not prophesying be excited uh, for future biblical events that we hear about the prophecies and, and things coming. Hey, Christ is coming. I'm excited for that. Bring the rapture. I'm ready. You know? It's like, let's get out. But, you know, until then, we got, you know, there's work to be done. But but let's not, you know, let's let's be excited. You know, things are getting worse and worse. And the Bible says things will wax worse and worse. And, and Lord's coming. I don't know when. But it sure seems like it could be soon. I want to be busy about my father's business when he comes. But I want to be excited for him to come. I want to be excited about hearing the word of God. I want to be excited about those things. I hope you all are too. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 and 1, Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. just move right along oh good we're right on time too uh, prove all things hold fast that which is good prove all things many places in the bible you know the lord will say prove me we i know uh, in 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 malachi regarding uh tithing he says hey prove me that i will not open the windows of heaven hey prove me and there's so many times that that god wants to prove himself to us and there's so many times i own that god wants uh to pr to prove us to him not that he needs us to prove him but to prove our own faithfulness to us to him Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. To test. Uh, to approve. To allow. To discern. To examine. And the Bible tells us examine yourselves that you be in the faith. Uh, we, we should always have that examination of where we're at. Hey, how's my prayer life? Uh, how, how's my rejoicing? You know, how's my... Uh, um, giving of thanks am I listening am I, have I been hearing the spirit of God has God been speaking to my heart it, there's nothing wrong with with proving yourself in, in, in what 
in these things, in this little order of list of things that really is the Christian life. Very, very, you know, this is very practical, practical things, but really it's the Christian life. Now, I've heard it said this way, a little more basic, but I've heard it said this way by a good friend of mine, uh, Brother Kenny Menendez. I used to go to the jail service with him, and he used to preach this in the jail. He says, Christianity's easy. Christianity's easy. But it's hard. And it's like, okay, that don't make no sense at all. Christianity's easy, but it's hard. I mean, what, is, what does God want us, to, want us to do? Well, He wants us to read the Bible. That's pretty easy. The Bible's really only about a fifth grade reading level. For the most part. That's pretty easy. He wants us to pray. Well, that's just talking to God. That's pretty easy. But it's hard. It's a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to, to, to progress, to upkeep. To read your Bible every day, to pray every day, be in church every service. I mean, those are all easy things to do. But sometimes it's kind of hard to do it. And it's funny how life and, and life happens. It's funny how life can just kind of, kind of take you down the path, and all of a sudden, days and days. And I think we all understand how days and weeks just they just go by so fast, and and it's like, whoa! I need to just, you know, pull the reins a little bit and and and, and take that time with the Lord. And I think part of what I'm getting at tonight is. Individually, and as a corporate church, we all need to take that time with God and be sure that we're doing it. And be sure that we're doing it and understand the importance of it. Understand the importance of it. Because a group of Christians that are all spending their time with God, that's a powerful thing. That's something that the Lord, man, He can do something with that. He can take a a group of Christians that that they're they're uh, prayer warriors and and they're going to Him and just asking God to bless and and to open doors and of opportunity and and to touch hearts in the community and, and to to be with those uh, soul winners that are going out and those those bus workers that we're going to have that are going out knock it and we need people to be joyfully praying for that and just praying for the, the those who can go out we need people praying and just going to God and and listening to the spirit and and asking him to bless in what we're going to be doing prove all things um, abstain from the appearance of evil. I don't think I need to hit that real hard. <laughs> but it's a great list of things. Abstain from the appearance of evil. Hey, we want to be sure that we're doing that. You know what the world does? And I'm going to say, I'm going to say this. They do this. And I, and I want to say an unsaved worldly world person, the heathen, to say it roughly <laughs> they're all doing this oh what's going to happen next oh, if we just get another guy in office oh yeah. can I say that's an appearance of the world oftentimes it, I mean, you, you know, we think of that term as abstain from the appearance of evil it's like okay I'm not going to be some wicked uh, guy with you know with a knife I don't. I don't know. I'm trying to describe something really horrible, but quite honestly, they they're all just that nervous wreck of I don't know what to do. You know, we have a great God that says, "Hey, rejoice evermore." He says, "Pray without ceasing." He says, "Be thankful," and all that we do, and we don't have to be like the world that is so scared of what's going to happen next. 
that they're just sitting there wringing their hands together going oh what are we going to do who's going to get elected next what if this happens what about the the cure for you know and they're just they just are paralyzed a Christian doesn't have to be that way we have a liberty a grace that God's given us to walk confidently knowing that God has already taken care of every detail for your life for my life and he says Rejoice evermore. He says, pray without ceasing. He says, in everything give thanks. He says, quench not the spirit. You need to hear my voice. I want you to hear what I have to say. I want you to know that we can be confident. That we can be courageous. That, that in all that a Christian does, that God is, is right in the middle of it. He says, listen, I want you to abstain from the appearance of evil. You don't need to be like the world. You don't need to worry about what the world worries about. You, you don't need to fret over what the world frets about. You, you, don't, you don't need to have that appearance. Why? Because you're my child. Because I've saved you. I have a purpose for you. I need you to pray. I need you to give thanks. And he goes on to say, and I'm going to ask this dearly. He says, brethren, pray for us. Second Thessalonians 3 and 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. I want to ask you very personally tonight, Pray for your pastor. Pray for those who are working. Pray for my wife, please. Pray for us. Because we need it. You need it. We should be praying one for another. No matter who's the pastor, pray for the pastor. Pray for those who are willing to... to for, for all this... I, I know that everyone here does so much and there's things that get done here I still don't know who does it all. And But he says, Paul says, brother, pray for us. That the word of the Lord may have free course. Pray that, pray that there'll be people saved. Pray that there'll be people that'll accept Christ. You know, it's really not about filling this building, although I think we would all think that was really neat. It's about filling heaven. It's about filling heaven. It's about telling people about Jesus Christ. It's about telling people that there's a God that loves them. It's about telling people that they can know for sure they can, that they can go to heaven someday. The Bible says the angels rejoice over one sinner that comes to repentance. And I know my pastors always said it this way. There's only one way to keep heaven happy. And that's people coming to repentance. That's the sin. That's pe people being saved. It makes God happy. And he's always said this. If we keep heaven happy with sinners coming to repentance, God will take care of the church. Jesus says, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it, shall not prevail against it. But he tells us, go and win them to Christ. Go and teach and baptize. He says, go get them. But it's going to take prayer. 
It's going to take people who who want to rejoice in what God's going to do. Who wants to pray for what God's going to do. And, and, and who want to be, wants to be thankful for all that God is doing and is going to do. And, and, it, and it takes the right, if you will, the spirit about us. The right heart. It takes taking what God's saying and, and bringing it bring it to right here and saying God I'm going to be that Christian who's going to pray I'm going to be that Christian who's going to rejoice I'm going to be that Christian who's going to be thankful I want to listen to the spirit uh, I'm going to abstain from the world and I'm not going to be like them because I know that you have a great plan for, for, for this church for all of our lives and for those in my sphere of influence, we all have it. There's people around us that look to us. Every one of you in this room has somebody that looks at you and says, I want to be like him. I want to be like her. I'm going to follow what they're doing. And we're either going to show them the joy of the Lord or not. Right? And it's children, it's grandchildren, it's neighbors and friends. And you say, well, they're all they're all Christians all my friends are Christians and believers well, that's okay they need encouraged they, they, iron sharpeneth iron so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend and, and it goes with ladies too our, our, our people around us need encouraged and, and it's Christians that are going to do that Christians that, that have said you know what Lord I'm just going to believe these these little truths and, and it's contagious it's contagious and it just it goes out in people's lives you change I don't know if I've told this story here and if I have you can tell me you already told that story I'm going to tell one more quick story I'll be done my friend at work uh, my co-worker I met him the first time I met him was probably um, six six years ago probably and um, and this is just coming from him I'm just I don't know I'm the only one I have to illustrate about so just bear with me we were reminiscing kind of if you will reminiscing about some old jobs you know when you're in construction you talk about what do you talk about you talk about the job you did last year the one you did two years ago or, and uh, we were talking about this job uh, the first time I had met him I said you know the first time I met you we were working at George Fox University he says yeah he says I remember I remember the first time I met you Mark and I said oh really I said why I mean I mean why you know he says because he says he says my marriage is on the rocks he says I had lost my joy in the Lord I hadn't been living for God. I was going through a really, really hard time. And he said, you are so excited for the things of God. He goes, it just lit a fire in me. He says, it changed my life. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I mean, you know, really? He says, yeah. He says, you... It must have been, and he said this, he goes, it must have been right after you started, you joined that, that new church that you're going to, the Grandview Baptist Church. He says, it must have been right after you started there, because you were so excited for the Lord, and you were just so excited about the things of God. He goes, it relit a fire in me, and, and it, it encouraged me to just trust in God's promises. And, and, I, and I say this humbly, I'm just saying this is the conversation we had. I had no idea. This had been. This was six years ago. It was the first time I'd ever met him, and we worked together on a job for about a month and a half. And I was his boss, and he was a worker. But I've I've learned this by experience. That if we let the joy of the Lord come out of us, it affects other people. It changes lives, and we never know who it is. We just never know. And it's and it's a. It's an encouraging thing to have somebody say, you know, when I met you X amount of years ago, is at this place, and I don't even remember, but he does. 
And that's the that's that's the key. I didn't even remember. But he did. He says, My time with you, it helped me. And that's what I'm getting at. That's what I'm getting at. Is when we let when we let the light of Jesus Christ come out of us in our lives by applying these truths to our lives. It changes lives. Let's pray and we'll be done. We're a little over. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> Lord, I love you. And uh, God, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for all that's here tonight, Father. God, I pray, Lord, that in our uh, remainder of our week, that you would just allow, uh, really, Lord, that your joy to flow out of us. Lord, I pray that uh, even you would teach us how to uh, improve our prayer lives or just be sure that we're praying to you, God. Lord, that we would become thankful in all that goes on, Father, because it's all filtered through your fingers. And we can trust you. Lord, I pray, God, that we would listen to you as, you, as we read your word, as we hear the preaching and teaching. Father, all these things we've talked about tonight, Lord, I, I just pray, God, that you would just uh, work and move in each one of us tonight. These people that are here tonight, Father, and it, I pray, God, that you would uh, dismiss us with your blessing. And Lord, we love you, and God, we thank you so much for all you do. In Jesus' blessed name, amen. We can be dismissed. Thank you so much.